I've gotten a lot of requests to make some customizable Twitch alerts. So this week, I'm finally caving. You're welcome. In all seriousness though, please do keep the requests coming. They give me good ideas for videos. Anyway, the alerts look something like this. And all you have to do is download the Blender files from the Discord, link in the description, and follow along. Also, this is going to be a two-part video. This video is going to cover how to customize your alerts, and next week we'll cover how to implement them into both Stream Labs and Stream Elements. Although I'd like to encourage you to try to figure it out yourself. It's not too difficult. And if you enjoy these kinds of free graphics, the absolute best way to show your support for the channel is to hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell. It's completely free, it really helps me out, and most importantly, it lets you know when there's cool new stuff to check out on the channel, like next week's video on how to implement these. That being said, let's get started. My name is Chris Folia, I'm your Stream Scholar, welcome to stream school. Alright, when you first open the sci-fi alert, it should look very similar to this. And the absolute very first thing you want to do, I swear to god if I get one more DM about this being grey, anyway, the absolute first thing you want to do is come up here and click the shiny circle button. That'll put this viewport into rendered preview mode so you can see your alert as you're working on it. Then you can hit space on your keyboard to watch it play out. So you'll notice that it bursts in, it holograms in, then it holograms out and it bursts out. So then you can just hit space on your keyboard again to pause the animation and let's get to work. So the first thing you're probably gonna wanna change is replacing your logo here with your logo. So to do that, just come over here to the list of text, click on your logo, come down here to the materials panel, and you're gonna have to replace the logo in two places. That's because the logo splits in two for the hologram effect at the beginning and end of the alert. So to do that, just move your mouse over here, scroll down with your middle mouse wheel, and you'll notice that we have two your logo here dot PNGs. You're gonna wanna hit the X button next to both of them and that will completely get rid of the logo altogether. Now to add your logo, just come back over here to the right and click the first open button. And then you're gonna wanna find your logo wherever it is. And side note here, you're gonna wanna make sure that your logo is a square aspect ratio image. That means the width and height of the image file need to be the same. So you're gonna wanna find your logo, double click it, and that will bring in the first instance of your logo. Then. Just come down here to the second open button, click it, and do the exact same thing. And that will sort of complete the logo. So then let's say that you're not happy with the size or the rotation or the position of the logo. That's pretty easy to change. Just come over here, find this giant circle, and you're gonna wanna click it. Then if you come over here to the left and grab the movement widget, you can move it around by clicking and dragging the white circle. Or if you grab the rotation widget, you can rotate it by using the white circle. Or if you grab the scale widget, you can scale it up and down by using the white circle. And if you're someone who prefers hotkeys like me, the hotkey to move it is G for grab, R for rotate, and S for scale. So the next option on our list of text is the LED color. And that will change these glowy LED bits on the side frames. So if you click LED color, come down here to the materials panel, you'll see this color box right here. If you click it, it'll bring up a cool color wheel and you can change the LEDs to whatever color you want. And then on the right here, we have a nice black and white gradient and that allows you to change the brightness. Now, I'm personally going to leave mine at blue because I think it complements my logo nicely. So the next two options on the list are BG Gradient 1 and BG Gradient 2. And you'll notice that over here we have a nice radial gradient so it's brighter in the center on the backdrop and darker around the edges. Now, I wanted to give you all as much control as possible so you can change both of those. So if you click BG Gradient 1, that will change the center of the gradient. So if we come down to the materials panel, click the color box and start to move that around or change the brightness, we have full control over that. Then BG Gradient 2 will change the outside edge of the gradient. So you could do a darker version of the same color if you just want like a nice radial gradient like that, 
or you can change it to a cool two-tone gradient if you really want to. Uh, again, I'm personally just gonna leave mine at the nice dark blue to complement my logo. But let's say you don't like the position or the size of the gradient. There's also an option to change that. If you click this box right here, you can do the exact same thing as with the logo. Just grab the movement widget and you can move the gradient around if you want it to be sort of a linear gradient from left to right. Or you can grab the scale widget and you can scale it up and down if you want the gradient to be more dramatic. Or you can scale it on one axis to make it an oval gradient if you want to rather than a circle. And then you could grab the rotation widget and you could rotate it to create all sorts of cool different effects. Uh, I'm just gonna leave that alone, but the next option on the list is the plastic color. And that changes these plastic bits on the side of the frame. And this is pretty much the same as all of the other options. Just come down to the materials panel and click the color box and you can make the plastic whatever color you want. I'm just gonna leave mine at black personally. And then the next option is metal color, which allows you to change the tint of the metal in the exact same way. So you can make the metal whatever color you want. And that's it in terms of color options for customizability. Uh, the next options are not located in the materials panel. So if we click logo transparency, that option is gonna be over here on this panel to the right. And if this panel doesn't exist for you, just hit N on your keyboard as in no, and that panel will pop right back up. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom of this panel, make sure you're on the item tab, but if you scroll all the way to the bottom of this panel, you'll notice we have an option called logo transparency. If you click on the number box next to that and drag that to the left, that will fade your logo out. So let's say you don't have a logo. You could just get rid of the logo altogether and have this cool hologram backdrop. Or let's say you really like your logo and you want it to be super vibrant. You can push this all the way to one and it'll be completely opaque. Now, I'm personally just gonna go for a nice mid value of 0.5, so it's a little bit faded out. So the next option is hologram offset. So if you click on that, and you zoom in here to the logo using the little mouse wheel, you'll notice that the logo edges are nice and crisp. I figured this, this is a hologram projector sort of sci-fi machine. Maybe the edges aren't gonna be perfectly calibrated, so I wanted an option for that. So if you come down here where the logo transparency option was, now that we have hologram offset selected, you'll notice the option says hologram offset. So if you click and drag on that, you'll notice that that offsets the two instances of our logo to create sort of a cool hologram effect. Now, you'll also notice that if you click and drag on this, that this moves in pretty big increments. It's, it's a little bit hard to control. So if you hold shift and click the number box, you can move it in much smaller increments. So I'm gonna move mine just a teensy bit because I think that looks pretty cool. And it especially looks pretty cool when the stripes animate when it plays. So if we play that back, you'll notice that the stripes move up and down. And I think that looks pretty cool with the hologram effect. So the next three options, we have glow color one, glow color two, and glow color center. So you can't see those right now because we're in the middle of the alert. Those affect the light pattern as it bursts in and out of existence. So if you come down here to the timeline, click and drag the playhead to the end of the animation or the beginning of the animation where you can see the light burst, and then you modify the glow colors, you can actually see the changes. So glow color one affects the actual overall color of the glow. So we come down here to the materials panel, you can change that to whatever you want. <laughs> and then glow color two affects the outside edge of the glow. So you could make a darker version of the same color, or you could go all out and make a weird two-tone kind of gradient. Uh, I'm personally gonna leave those alone and leave it nice and blue. I know, boring, whatever. But then glow color sensor affects the center of the glow, which I would highly recommend leaving this white just so it looks like an actual burst of light. But the option is here if you want to change that to something else. So the final step after you've completely customized your sci-fi alert is to export it to a transparent WebM video file. And to do that, all you have to do is come over here to the right 
click on the printer icon and you'll notice that I already filled out all of the correct options to export a WebM video. And side note here, I turned audio off. Uh, if you want to add your own sound effects, I have a tutorial on that on my channel. Um, or you don't have to add sound effects to the video at all. You can also add the sound effects in Stream Labs or on Stream Elements pretty easily. Uh, so anyway, to export this, all you have to do is come over here to the output, click the folder, and choose where you want this to end up on your hard drive. I'm going to call this sci-fi alert heck yes dot webm. Then click off of it, then click the accept button. And that does not create the video file. The video file does not exist anywhere yet. To actually create the video file, you have to render it out. The software has to calculate the individual frames. So to do that, just come all the way up here to the top left, click on render, and then click render animation. And you'll notice that it plays through all of the individual frames. Uh, that's creating each image in the video file. So as soon as that's done, your WebM video file will be wherever you specified in this little folder dialog. Now, hopping over to the clean alert, it should look very similar to this when you open it. And the absolute very first thing you wanna do, again, is come up here and click the shiny circle button to put this viewport into rendered preview mode. So then, if you hit space on your keyboard, you notice that we have this cool logo panning animation, but it pops up. You have the logo animation, and then it pops out. So just get to a point where you're happy to work on it, hit space on your keyboard to pause the animation and let's get to work. So the first thing you're gonna wanna change again is probably gonna be replacing the default logo text here with your logo. Uh, the, the reason that's the way it is is because I have the your logo here circle, but it's too big to see all of the text. So to change that, just come over to the text list, click on logo or image, and you only have to change that in one position this time. And side note here again, I can't stress this enough, make sure your logo is a square aspect ratio. And it also doesn't have to be your logo. You can put any image you want here. It could be a picture of a dog or a picture of a serene forest or a beach or something. Uh, get creative. So over here on the right in the materials panel, you only have to change your logo here.png in one location. So just hit the X button, just like we've already done. Hit the open button, and then find whatever image you want to use. So I'm gonna use the fish logo again. So I double click that and it comes in and notice it's nice and big and scaled like that. And let's say that it doesn't fill the entire box or you want it to be smaller even. You have full control over that. You just have to come to the center here, find this box right here in the center, click on it, come over here and grab the movement widget and you can move it around. You can grab the rotation widget and you can rotate it. And you can grab the scale widget and you can scale it up and down. And side note, if you do rotate it, it will move in whatever direction you rotated it when it animates, just because of how it's set up. So the next option on the list is the gradient colors. So gradient color one affects the left half of the gradient. So if we change that, you'll see that that changes nice and neat. And gradient color two changes the right half of the gradient. I think I actually am gonna change this one to give it sort of a cool aqua color palette, aqua green, whatever. And let's say that you want the gradient to be in a different position. You wanna move it around and mess with it. You have full control over that too. Just grab this circle right here and you can, you can grab the movement widget and you can move it around to change the position of the gradient if you just want it to be up in one corner. You can rotate the gradient if you want it to be in a different direction. And you can scale the gradient if you want it to blend a bit smoother over the course of the whole thing. Or any combination of the three, of course. So the next option on the list is the border color. So if we click border color, that will change the color of the outline. So if we come down to the materials panel and we click the color box, you can make that whatever color you want as well, or whatever brightness if you just want like a nice black stroke. Now, personally, I'm gonna leave this white just because it matches my colors well, and I think it looks really clean. 
Uh, but the next option on the list is the logo transparency. And this is exactly the same as the sci-fi stinger or sci-fi alert. That's gonna be in this panel on the right under logo transparency. So if you click that, you can drag it all the way to the left if you just want a gradient box or all the way to the right if you have a background image that you really like. Uh, I'm personally gonna leave mine faded out so I can see the gradient and I'm gonna use a value of 0.25. So then the final text option here is the border thickness. So if we click on that and we come over here to exactly where the other options were, you can click and drag on that to change the border super thick or you can just make it non-existent if you don't want a border at all. And regardless of what you do, the entire thing will animate exactly the same. So I'm just gonna leave mine at 0 0.07 because I think it looks nice. And that's it for the text controls here. But in terms of physical controls, you can also change the shape of your box. And to do that, just click on any of these corner circles and grab the movement widget or use the hotkeys I said earlier, G for grab, and you can move these around. So let's say you wanna make like an interesting polygon shape of some sort for your alert rather than a box. You can just move these controls around to put it in whatever shape you want and the entire thing should still play uh, exactly the same. And you notice we have this one animation option where it sort of pops in and pops out. I added a second animation option to this alert. So I'm gonna undo this to square it back out since this animation option is a little bit more robotic. So if we come all the way up here to the upper right, you'll see that we have a bunch of different collections. So we have animation two selected right now by default, just because I like that one better. Uh, but if we uncheck that and check animation one, you notice that this one sort of scales in and out. So you can choose whichever one you like better, or you could use them both for different purposes. It's completely up to you. Uh, so once your alert here is completely customized, I'm gonna use animation two. The export process is identical to the sci-fi alert. Just come over here to the printer icon, click it, come down here to output. All of the output options are exactly the same as the sci-fi one. Again, I turned audio off. I do have that tutorial video if you wanna add audio to your Blender file, or again, you can add your audio to Streamlabs or Stream Elements separate from your video file. Uh, so to choose where you put this, just go down to the output dialog, click the folder, and choose wherever you want it to go on your hard drive. I'll call this clean alert. Yeah, <laughs> dot a webm. Uh, can hit enter twice instead of pressing accept if you really want to. And then just to actually render out the video and create a video file, just go up to render, render animation. And again, this will play through the entire uh, timeline, generating all of the images for your video file. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully at this point, you have some cool new custom alerts for your live stream. Make sure you stay tuned for next week's video on how to implement them into both Stream Labs and Stream Elements. If you wanna come hang out with my favorite community on Twitch, I'm live at least every Friday at twitch.tv slash oraclefishlive. And if you like the free graphics and wanna stay tuned for next week's video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell for new content every single week. Until next time, my name is Chris Folia, I'm your stream scholar, and class is out.